here in Egypt, it seems that um, we have a lot of, of uh, discoveries mm -hmm. and uh, uh, ordinary citizens, they, they, they believe very much in digging mm -hmm. and uh, trying to find uh, monuments. Mm -hmm. So I want to talk to you about this. Yeah. What should the government do in this regard? Uh, what is the role of um, clerics mm -hmm. in telling people that, okay, this is not only illegal, it's also haram or forbidden mm -hmm. by, by, by Sharia? Mm -hmm. um, how can we fight this? How can we control this uh, phenomenon? Yes, I, 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 I'm very disturbed by the fact that many people think that uh, if they find a piece of antiquity under their house or in their garden, that it, uh, uh, it belongs to them and that it's not immoral or haram for them mm -hmm. to take it. It's illegal, but it's not haram. Mm -hmm. This is not true because antiquities belong to the nation. Okay? And to humanity. And to, hu and to humanity in general. Mm. And uh, by taking this piece of antiquity, each, you know, archaeology and, 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 you know, ancient Egyptian history is like a big puzzle, a jigsaw puzzle. And every time you excavate or you read a document, you, uh, you add a piece to the, the puzzle. Mm. So if you take a piece of uh, an antiquity that you found uh, uh, for yourself, you're robbing humanity of this information mm. and so you it is very immoral you're not just stealing something from one person you're robbing humanity in general <laughs> government can do in this regard? Should it try to persuade the uh, Azhar uh, scholars, for example, to uh, make um, uh, media campaigns and talk to the people about it? What should be done? Yes, there are two things, I think. Yes, mm -hmm. of course, awareness, to spread awareness. Uh, well, more than one, more than two things. Mm -hmm. um, of course, uh, uh, Al-Azhar could play a role in this. Um, also, making the people love their heritage and teach maybe improving the curriculum in uh, in, in schools mm. because i remember when i was in, i traveled a lot because of my father's career but uh, i did go to school in egypt for the years in between uh, post um, the way ancient egyptian history is taught in schools is boring <laughs> and yeah. dead and you cannot relate to these people it just you know mina wahid al qutrin mina who united upper and lower egypt mm -hmm. and and ahmost who uh, uh, defeated the Hicks you don't get to know the the real thing no. unless you study it afterwards after school no no you mm -hmm. could actually improve the curriculum in school and make it more interesting for the students yes but this is not the case no. this is not what's going on no but it should be done it should be like there was a revolution why don't we revolutionize exactly. uh, uh, curricu mm. the curriculum mm. uh, and uh, also you know I think museums can play a role and we're going to uh, uh, the museums already have educational programs we can improve that in uh, different museums in Egypt and try to teach young children about their heritage and make them appreciate it. Because if they appreciate their heritage, they would not ever rob it. Mm -hmm. uh, so, and also, uh, of course, also maybe increasing the punishment for people who do that. Yes, that's a good step. Yeah. <laughs> that's yeah. very important. Yes. Uh, because, you know, um, it, uh, people make so much money out of, uh, out of and this. And, out they, of this they get away with and it. And they get away with it. Mm. And, and the punishment the is not, it was like three years at some point. Not so enough, of course.
uh, there should be a deterring uh, yeah. law, and I think I agree with you, this is very important. But uh, what about the situation of museums? I think that the situation of museums is mm -hmm. very poor. Mm -hmm. uh, poor maintenance, poor exhibition, uh, poor organization, mm -hmm. poor everything. What can we do to improve this? It depends which museums, not all museums. And um, I think, um, of course, now the country, the whole country is going through a very difficult uh, phase. There is no money. <laughs> mm. uh, so it's very difficult to really improve things without the help, I think, of the civil society. I think all museums around the world have friends groups. Mm. And uh, these friends groups help the museum a lot. Uh, so I think, um, and this is uh, underway now. There is a group of people who are uh, who trying to who are trying to establish a friends group for the Egyptian Museum. Mm -hmm. There is a friends group for the Coptic Museum, for example. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, so there are friends groups in Egypt, and I think a friends group for the Egyptian Museum could do wonders during this uh, stage. Such as, such as, such as. Of course, it could it, it could generate money. It could, mm. it could uh, bring money into the museum that could be used to improve things. Mm. Because right now, it's, uh, money is in short supply. Yes. <laughs> so the and civil society uh, talking can Talking about help. money and supply, uh, one of the main problems that we discovered after the revolution is that when the Egyptian museum in Tahir was looted, um, mm. uh, the official said that the cameras haven't been working for years. No, the cameras were working. But I think the problem, uh, uh, I think the problem had to do with uh, the cameras being able to capture what's going on at night in the dark. Okay, this I is that what they the meant problem. by not working, yes. by the cameras not yeah. working. That's all for this edition of the program. We hope you've enjoyed it. If you did, do join us again next week, same time. Until then, bye-bye.